Howdy ho, good neighbors. Welcome to another episode of On Top and Hot with your host, John Zadar. This is Wednesday, August 16th, which reminds me, I have got a live streaming event tomorrow. I have these every Thursday, 4 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Me and my co-host Taylor were there for an hour just to talk to other investors about stocks they're interested in. You give us the ticker, I'll go over the information, Taylor will go over the charts, and we'll give you our opinion on them. Now, we're only there for an hour, so if you really want to make sure your stock gets looked at, get it in there early. I can only look at so many in 60 minutes. The best way to do that, I put up a placeholder for the video at around 2.30, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and you can drop comments in early, so put your ticker in early. That'll give me a chance to see it too, and then I can give you more bang for your buck by having that information before the show starts. So what do we do on this show? Come on, you know what we do. We look for hot penny stocks. We're looking for stocks under five bucks on any market that had the potential to make us money. Now, when I do my research looking for hot penny stocks, I'm doing it on the charts. I don't pay much mind to the filings of the news presses until I find a chart that has heat. When I find a lot of volume coming in or a breakout setup, then I go looking through that information for a catalyst. Well, I did that today for us, and it was new fun. Oh, boy, it was tough today, folks, very tough. Now, I'm not saying I didn't find hot charts. I always find hot charts, but that's just the campfire. You want to get that fire built up, you got to find some lumber. You need a catalyst. Well, not all hot charts have catalysts. So I was having a hard time finding a hot chart with catalysts. Then it occurred to me with most of them that I was looking at, this is financial season. All these financials are coming out right now, and that's what people are paying attention to. I mean, the other news is important, and if it's there, we're going to look at it. But it is financial season. So all three stocks we're looking at today are dealing with their financials in one way or another. So the first one we're going to take a look at is eBet Inc., ticker eBet, E-B-E-T. Now this stock, it broke out yesterday afternoon. It had a nice jump, went up over the 200, and I thought, whoa, there's one we can talk about. So I went running around looking for a catalyst. There was nothing. There was nothing, so we passed on it yesterday. Then this morning, she took off pre-market, going from about 3.5 cents up to 8 cents pre-market. So, of course, I seen it because I post all the runners first thing in the morning. I get up, look at all the pre-market runners, and I'm posting them on Twitter, Discord, Facebook. So, there's no reason not to keep up with it. Well, I looked for this one. Again, no news, no catalyst. So, I was going to just pass on it. Then it occurred to me, it's got momentum. It's got a lot of momentum, and that is a catalyst in itself. If a stock is already moving and it hasn't stopped, you may want to play that one. I did. I got into it early, maybe a little bit too early, but she had a nice run today. There was a lot of volatility, and she finished the day a little hard. But I want to share the information with you why I traded it and what I was looking at and what we might get out of it tomorrow. <laughs> so we are looking at EBET. She finished the day at 0.0868. She has got some aftermarket activity going on right now. Right now, she is at almost 110% gains. This is a penny stock on the NASDAQ, so you can buy her and sell her for free. No transaction fees. You can trade her pre-market, aftermarket. No special permissions required. Just get in there and trade. Just remember to change your period. It's not a day trade. It is a day plus extension, or it's good till canceled plus extension. You got to get extension in your time period for your trade or it won't even see your order. So what does eBet do? Well, they tell us over here, eBet operates and develops iGaming wagering products for bettors around the world. You like the way they spelt bettors there? <laughs> the company is focused on bringing better iGaming products to market in order to cater to the millennial and Gen Z demographics in the wagering space. eBet operates online sports books and casino brands, Caramba, which is very popular, Hopa, Griffin Casino, Bet Target, Dansk 777, Generation VIP, and Gagawi. These are active in more than 15 countries. 
The company was awarded lots of awards. The eSport Product Year Award for 2021 from Sigma Europe. In 2022, they won the award from Sigma Asia and Sigma America. And its brand, Caramba, received the SBC's Award for Innovation in Casino and Gaming Entertainment and the 2022 Sigma America's Award for Online Casino of the Year. So they've got a lot of recognition for what they are doing. So what is the relative volume around the company today? Bloody hell, look at that. She exploded. Going from 47.7 million, which is not under the radar, up to virtually 1.2 billion shares today. With no good news, with no catalyst, I couldn't find it anywhere. Now, yes, the financials did come out, but they're not good. I'm gonna show those to you. 1.2 billion shares and the stock was running today. Share structure for eBet. They don't give us a lot of information over here. They tell us the outstanding share count is only 26.2 million. We can definitely live with that. The float won't be any higher. What's really low here though is the market cap. Now I don't pay much heed to market caps, but a lot of people do. Well, that is itty bitty, $1 million market cap. Checking out the financials for eBet. These are exciting. Her annuals have exploded. 2019, 2020, and 2021, she never got over $200,000. We got to add three zeros to any of the numbers on these boards. We'll look at 2022. Add those three zeros. That's $58.5 million. Since 2021, where did all that money come from? Cha-ching, slot machines, gambling. Looking at the quarterly, well, this is exactly the opposite. The annuals are going up, the quarterlies are going down. And first quarter of 2022, she was at 19 million. First quarter for 2023, she's down to 11.5 million. Still making profit though. Now I told you their financials just came out for June. They are right here. Form 10Q for the quarterly period ended June 30th, 2023 for eBet Inc. Let's take a look at some of the important numbers. We're gonna compare 2023 to 2022. Looking at their total assets, 2022, let me bring that up there so you can see that. That is $69 million and they dropped in 2022 down to 31 million. Folks, that's over a 50% drop. Where did all those assets go? Liabilities. They tell us that they had 47 million and that is kicked up to 50 million. More debt, less assets, not great. Looking at our revenues. All right, we are looking at the three months ended June 30th for 2023 and 2022 and the nine months for that same period. 2022, the nine month period, she did 44 million. This year, she did 33 million, dropping about 30%. On the three month, she dropped even more, like 50%, more than that, going from 18 million down to barely 8 million. So no, her financials are not looking good. But I think I know why she dropped. I kept going through this to see if I could learn anything and I found this. On April 27th, April mind you, the company was notified by its gaming platform operator services provider, Aspire, that the Gaming Regulatory Authority in Germany had sent a letter that Aspire would be required to shut down activity of its gaming operations in Germany. Now, Aspire is the company that this company uses to put their games out in Germany. Well, that company didn't have a license, so this company suffers for it. Aspire shut down its activities in Germany on May 7th, 2023, and as a result, the gaming websites owned by the company that operate in Germany were shut down on that date as well. So they had revenues come to a complete halt. They tell us they did make some money, but not as much as they normally do. And is that gonna come back? Well, I would think Aspire would try to get that license and then we would be back up online. So I think that's maybe what hurt them, but still, I don't see any good news here to tell me why she is running so hard. Let's go take a look at those disclosures. All right, we've got the 10Q, which we just took a look at, and we got one 8K you do need to be aware of. They got a notice of delisting from the NASDAQ a while ago. 
They tell us here, as previously reported, on November 21st, 2022, the company received a deficiency letter from the NASDAQ because they did not meet the minimum bid price requirement of $1. They were under $1 for too long. When that happens, NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange will give you six months to get that price up over a dollar. But you have to close at the end of the day over a dollar 10 straight days in a row. Well, the company didn't make it. What happens if you don't make it? They yank you off the major exchange and throw you down to the OTC like it's prison. And to them, a major exchange stock, it is just like prison. Well, they missed it. They should have gone down, but they appealed. They did some begging. They got another six months, and now they have got till November 20th, 2023 to get the price over a dollar for 10 straight days, or they will most likely end up on the OTC market. All right, that takes care of our disclosures. Let's go take a look at that news, which there's not a whole heck of a lot of. All this news, none of it's theirs. And <laughs> this is all from Seeking Alpha about other companies. We got one piece of news here that came out July 26th. They tell us here that eBet initiates review of strategic alternatives. The board of directors of eBet initiates a review of strategic alternatives to maximize value. The board is considering a full range of strategic alternatives, including a potential merger, a sale, or other strategic transaction. The company has retained Houlihan Loki as its exclusive financial advisor to assist with the strategic review process. So they're going to be making some changes here. But again, I don't see any good news anywhere. The financials definitely weren't good news. They took a big hit, and yet it is running. Why? I don't know. But the momentum was there, so I got in and I played this stock today. Let's go take a look at it. Let's do some charting now. We're going to be using my free trading platform, Think or Swim. You can get this free just by signing up with TD Ameritrade. And that's free too. So before we look at eBet, I wanted to share a ticker with you, AKU. That's this one right here. As you can see, she is an atypical breakout chart and there was a lot of volume today and a jump. She is breaking out right now. I found this one after I had already found the three we were going to talk about. So I didn't do any research here. I'm going to leave that to you. Maybe she's a hot penny stock. So let's take a look at eBet now, ticker EBET. This is a six month, four hour view with our high bubble at $2.66 hitting February 1st. Now she started off right down here at about 50 cents roughly and went to $2.66. Oh my God, you're looking at over 500% run and I have no clue what got her running. She came down real quick, back up underneath that 200 with just a periodic bust through, but not getting anywhere. But right now she's got all this volume coming in. And I can't tell you where it's coming from and why. She hit this low bubble just under three cents at 0 0.027. Didn't make a whole lot of difference. She just went sideways sitting on top of her 200 day haul, which a lot of penny stocks are respecting right now. And for some unknown reason, she exploded this morning. Yesterday, she broke the 200 on the one chart and she started climbing and she has been climbing all day. Now, she's had some ups and downs as you're going to see on the other charts, but pre-market, she had already hit about eight cents and through the day, she hit a high of over 11 cents and after market right now, she looks to be at about eight and a half cents. Oscillators are screaming at us. All of them are pointing up or on fire. Can't go wrong if all your oscillators are pointing up. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view. So we had a huge fall here from this one spike that got through the 200 a long time ago. She was at 11.9. Ooh, she got close today. Fell down to that low bubble, went sideways. There's that 200 haul again. She respected it, bounced off of that, pushed herself through everything, and has had a pullback and is sitting right near that pre-market high. Oscillators are still very strong. Though they have had a pullback, there's still a lot of strength sitting up there. Five day, five minute. All right, let's just zoom in on this area right here. So this is where she broke out yesterday and I took a look at her and I didn't see any reason, so I left her alone. What a shame. 
I noticed her when I got up this morning at about 7.30. That's when I started looking around and I seen she was running. And she hit this high here of just under eight cents pre-market. She came onto the market and actually I bought in too early. And that's my problem, folks. I'm an impatient person. I do plan most of my buys, but when I get excited, I just buy at the wrong time. I knew it was going to take a dip as soon as it came onto the market, once the bell rang. And she did. She fell down here. I got in like in the second five-minute period. She came down, bounced off of this 50, and then she started flying. And she bounced again off of that 50. And you can see this strong support here. This is her pre-market high. Now, I have heard that if you want to get into a stock that you think is going to run, you watch the pre-market high. And when she dips at the bell, you wait for her to break the pre-market high. When she breaks the pre-market, that is a sign that this is a stock you can feel comfortable getting into. She had some rock and rolling going on here, ups and downs, but as you can see, she had a nice climb. Then she had a big giant sale here and she fell right back down to that pre-market high, which she has bounced off of, and right now she's working up towards that 50-day SMA. Oscillators took a beating right there, no doubt about it. You gotta expect profit takers, folks. You've got to, in this market, people want their money. So we had that big fall right there. Everything started coming down except my ADX because the ADX follows the trend. It just changes direction whenever the trend changes. So we had right here, you can see she started coming down. She was coming down. She started going up. She started going up. And then she fell real fast here. Well, rather than fall down, it went up. Oh, we just had another bounce. Look at that. She's climbing after market hours, folks. And look at our pattern here. Our PPO is about ready to have a crossover, pushing up. My ADX is pushing down. I purposely put my ADX oscillator underneath my PPO, percentage price oscillator, so I can look for the spread between the blue line and the red line. When they are spreading apart, guaranteed your price is rising. If either one of these lines change direction, it means my uptrend has stopped. So I love these two oscillators. MACD had a crossover uh, right at the end of the day. She is now crossing the signal line and she's got lots of green bars coming into the picture. And our RSI is now starting to climb back up and it is at 55 right now. I am liking EBET simply because of the chart. There's nothing else to say I like. I mean, they're making money. Money is coming in, but they took a big dip because one of the people they work with wasn't doing what they were supposed to. And now they're looking to make changes. So we could get a piece of news saying we're making this merger, this acquisition, we're doing something that's going to help the shareholder value. That would get this kicking. But when is that going to happen? So this is a stock I've played. I could have got out early, but to be honest, <laughs> I don't really use stop losses unless it's a long hold. Um, I'm busy through the day and I probably should. I'm running around, looking here, looking there, doing a lot of stuff. I came back and it's like, oh, it had fallen. It was like, oh. So I'm going to ride this out. She is coming back up right now and I am ahead of the game right now. No problem there. So EBET, you can do your due diligence. Maybe you'll find something I didn't find because by golly, she is hot. We're finding a lot of hot stocks on the NASDAQ. Got another one for you. This is Digital Brands Group, ticker DBGI. Now, Digital Brands is reporting their financials tomorrow. And their financials have been growing consistently and steady, looking really good. They're coming out at 9.30 in the morning. I know I should have showed this to you earlier. She has been running in anticipation of this. She started off at 40 cents and went up to 99 cents today. That's over 100% gains. Now, when I found DBGI, it was later in the afternoon. She was ripping. Well, now it's after market and the profit takers have taken their profits and she's fallen about 50%. I know that sounds bad, but if you can keep 50% or more, you're doing good. We expect a 50% drop on these big runs. Plus, if it lands on a strong SMA, you're doing even better, which is exactly what ours has done. So DBGI, she finished a day at 78 cents with just a little over 91% gains. And as I said, she is on the NASDAQ. Now I'm going to read you two descriptions here. This one doesn't say a whole lot. 
Digital Brands Group's purpose is to accelerate the growth of talented brands by offering specialized services and infrastructure that are crucial to the success of direct brands, including operations, marketing, technology, legal, and customer service. Okay, but what do you do? <laughs> they say we offer a wide variety of apparel. Okay, through numerous brands on both direct-to-consumer and wholesale basis. We've created a business model derived from our founding as a diligently native-first vertical brand. We focus on owning the customer's closet share by leveraging their data and purchase history to create a personalized targeted content and looks for that specific customer cohort. <laughs> I still don't have a lot of idea of what they do. I know they sell clothes. They definitely do that. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, that's a big increase, right? She went from, let's call it 100,000 shares to over 12 million. You're talking 120 times her normal volume. I believe that's right. Folks, that's a huge jump. Share structure for DBGI. Oh, I didn't know the float was so small. Outstanding share count is just under 6 million. Our float isn't going to be any higher than that, and it could be considerably lower. And even if it isn't, a low float starts at 10 million. This is like 6 million. We've got an excellent float here, folks. Financials for DBGI. Well, as you can see, every single year they have been growing from 3 million to 5 to 7 to 13 million with the profit margin growing right along with them. Looking at that quarterly, well, the last four quarters have all been in the 3 millions. The first quarter for 2023 took a nice jump. That went up to over 5 million, as did the profit margin. That increased huge too. So what is going to happen tomorrow? I don't know. It's looking good though, isn't it? Looking at our disclosures. On the 14th of this month, they filed their NT10Q. That is, we are not filing our quarterly report on time. So they were late. This bought them five days, so they had to have it out before August 19th. It is coming out tomorrow. And then we've got some S1s here. They are putting some units on the market. These are shares and warrants that are being sold together. If you want more details, just jump into either one of those. And jumping into that news, we've only got the one piece of news to look at, Digital Brands Group to report second quarter 2023 financial results on Thursday. That's it. That's what we've got. We've got strong financials. They have been growing consistently year after year, quarter after quarter. Everything is looking good. Now, these are coming out 930 in the morning and the chart's taking a jump down. Is it going to bounce up pre-market before 930? That's when they're going to be reporting it. Let's take a look at that chart. It's another atypical breakout chart. This is ticker DBGI Digital Brands Group. This is a six month, four hour view. We've got our high bubble six months ago at the end of November of $9.39. And on August 9th, we hit a low of 35 cents. Whoa, what a huge drop. She has poked her head up over that 200 a couple times to get some fresh air, but she's never got to stay there because it was just too steep. Well, it isn't too steep now, it's very flat. Now, after she hit that low bubble, she did a turnaround. She got through everything, and once she broke the 50, look at the excitement. I mean, it just launched from about 44 cents up to 99 cents, pulling back deep after market hours. Lots of volume today, but nothing before that. Osculators are incredibly hot. We had crossovers today and everything is pushing up except our RSI, which has fallen. It wasn't the overbought clear up at 77 and it's fallen down just to about 70. It is right at the overbought right now. Looking at that 20 day, one hour view. Whoo, look at that. No activity underneath the 200 little itty bitty bars floating on the 200 day haul. I told you these penny stocks have been paying a lot of heed to this haul. That's H-U-L-L. -L. Off of that low bubble, she did turn around. 
She got through that 50 and jumped. I mean, jumped over that 200 way up and she's fallen back and she is still over top of her nine day SMA. The 20 is just about ready to cross the 200 and the 50 is right behind that. Those are gonna be golden crosses. When these SMAs cross the 200, you normally see a push on the price. It is power. Our 200 day haul is also coming around. Everything is looking nice here. Oscillators, all of them are very strong, except the RSI, which had that pullback, but is working her way back up right now. Five day, five minute. Nothing really to talk about here. Where was the 14th? The 14th is right here. This is the day they said they were going to be filing their financials late. We had a little bump on that news, not much. And then sideways, and then today she took off. You can see it was right at the bell is when it all began. She was at 42 cents and it was a nice climb all day on that nine day SMA until it went parabolic. It's just too steep. It's too high. It is just too far away from the nine day SMA. It had to come down and it came down with force because it was so high and it crushed the 20, the 200, the 50. It is way down here right now. Now, in my mind, I am thinking this is going to be a rubber ball bounce. That is to say, the price comes down, goes under the water, and then comes back up, and then bounces on the top a couple of times. Well, right now, we are under the water, and you can see she's leveled off, and it is starting to push up, just starting right now. All of our oscillators say we are in recovery. Everything is just at the cusp of coming around right now. So, I would watch this. First thing in the morning, if you're up before the bell, I'm up at 7 o'clock. I start posting at 7.20. If you're up, I would be watching this. It could be radical before the bell, but then we've got to see what happens at the bell. And I don't know when they're going to actually bring out the report. Is it going to be 10 minutes after or is it going to be six hours later? I really don't know. So DBGI, she's had a lot of excitement around her today. She may have some more in the morning. I don't know what's going to happen after 930. And the NASDAQ just keeps giving us more hot penny stocks. This is JX Lux Venture Limited, ticker JXJT. We got ourselves another atypical breakout chart. It's a little early, but it is working on it right now. And when you look at the one hour chart, she's already broke out through the 200, went way up and came right back down and is laying on that 200 waiting to run. Well, they just came out with their quarterly report. It wasn't that great, except that they had outstanding net profit gains. It was humongous. And I think that in itself can give us some more here. JXJT finished today at $2.03 with just about 31% gains today. So what does JX Lux Venture do? Well, they are a Chinese company. They tell us here that the company is a casual menswear company that designs, develops, markets, and sells fashion menswear products in the People's Republic of China, the hugest market you're going to find. The company operates through five segments, wholesale, retail, contract manufacturing, tourism service, and cross-border e-commerce. As of December 31st, 2021, the company owned and operated one corporate store and 29 franchise stores. It also provides packaged group tour services online through the Lux Venture platform. They also engage in the offline and online wholesale of healthcare products, personal care products, cosmetics, maternal and child products, pet related products, universal cuisine and household products. They deal with a lot. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Whoa, another explosion. You see how financials draw people in? She wasn't even at 200,000 shares for her average. Today she is over 5.5 million shares. Share structure for the company, woohoo! <laughs> we got ourselves another low float. No, I didn't check, I was unaware. We have an outstanding share count here of just over six million. The float is never more than the outstanding share count, so we got ourselves a legitimate low float. Financials for Lux Venture. Well, as you can see, she's been growing. She took a dip here in COVID, but boy, what a jump. From 1.3 million up to 54 and then pushing to 79 million. 
What isn't nice here <laughs> is that they pay a lot for the money they make. They only got to keep 1.4 million out of that 80 million. Now they don't have anything here quarterly, but we're gonna get information on that looking at the news. Checking out our disclosures. We've got some six Ks here. One goes to news and one goes to the financials and it's just easier to get the information about the financials from the news. So let's jump on over there. I'm not gonna go too far back, but I want you to get the idea of what's happening. The company is making deals regularly. That's why they're making lots of money. We've got two pieces of news here. One came out in July, one came out in August. The company announces a new artificial intelligence initiative. A $1 million agreement with Tygene Vaccine Pharmaceutical Wholesale Company in connection with incorporating chat GPT type technology for ERP platform. They're using that AI all around. The company announces a new collaboration with Hannon Airlines for air ticket sales to promote through the company's channels and official accounts incorporating chat GPT type technology. Then we have the news about their financials. The company announces financial results for the six months ended June 30th, 2023. They tell us here that the company that engages in tourism with business segments covering tourism, tourism duty-free cross-border merchandise, and tourism technology solutions today announces its financial results for the six months ended June 30th. Now check this out significant profit reversal reversal the company recorded a net profit of 2.3 million dollars representing a significant improvement compared to the same period a year ago where they were down 19 and a half million dollars they were down 19 and a half million and now they're up 2.3 i know 2.3 don't sound like much but when you add up the movement she is up 21.8 million from last year. That is some huge, spectacular growth. Now check this out. Earnings per share soars. Earnings per share for the first half of 2023 was 39 cents. A substantial rise from the loss of $25.50 per share reported in the first half of 2022. We are talking about a comeback. Yes, a reversal. And I think this is enough to get this stock to move some more. Let's go take a look at that chart. We're looking at JXJT. Not the hottest atypical breakout chart we've looked at, but boy, has she got potential. We are looking at a six-month, four-hour view. Now, as you can see, our low bubble and high bubble are right in the same region here. This is April 28th. This is May 2nd. Look at the bubbles. We are at six cents on our low bubble and $13.90 for our high bubble. I cannot even calculate the percentage of gains that is. That was enough to make you rich, guaranteed. Now the actual low down here was at about $4.25. So you got an easy 300% gain right there. She came down under that 200 and she fell all the way down here, but she's nowhere near a low. Now, as you can see, she has come out from underneath all of her SMAs, got very excited when she got on top of her 200 haul, broke through the 50, and she just got right up underneath that 200 before she pulled back, and she is now sitting on her 50-day SMA. She made an adjustment, and it looks good. Volume was very strong today. And the oscillators are all looking good, except for that little bit of pullback on the RSI, but everything else is pushed into the moon. 20 day, one hour view. So we got a high here of $3.84 and a very quick drop, falling underneath everything. Then she got up on top of that 200 day haul. See how they respect it. She then fell to this low of $1.45 yesterday, and today she bounced. She just directly went from $1.53 straight up to $2.62 and came right back down to the nine-day SMA, which carried her to our 200. And she is sitting there right now, perfectly balanced. 
Our oscillators, our PPO is very strong, though it is turning down right now. It is way up there. And our MACD, she's crossed the uh, signal line. She's got a lot of strength, but she too is pulling back a little bit. And our RSI has fallen a lot. She is down to 54. Looking at that five day, five minute. So this says that jump, she did it very quick in the morning. She jumped from, it was $1.53 up to $2.60 and came back down to the $200. She landed hard on that and respected it completely. Jumped back up to her 50-day SMA and she's been riding on that. Right now she is underneath it. She could come down to the 200 and bounce again. I would kind of think she would. I don't think this is a rubber ball bounce where she's going to go over the 50. It could be, but it looks like with this break here and then dropping again, that she's probably going to come down to the 200. And then I would be looking for the bounce. And remember what sort of climbs this thing does when it gets hot. Oh, God. Oscillators are real poor on the five minute. But she is above the 200. And looking at that four hour, you can see she is working her way up there. And that one hour chart looks even better. You definitely can see she is working on that breakout. She is right there. Now she could pull back, but I am expecting her to jump. That was an incredible net profit reversal. JXJT, it's not going to hurt you to put it on your watch list. All of these stocks deserve to at least be put on your watch list. You can always delete them. But what they definitely deserve is a little more due diligence. Now the stocks we covered today, there wasn't a lot to consider. But if you can find more than I found, you'll be ahead of the game. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.